So this is what our CRUD application will look like. We've got three text fields with name, description, price. We are pretending we make some kind of menu application. And then we have the functionality create, read, update and delete with our buttons here. And then we want to display our uh, entries right down below here. And I've got one entry for now, pizza, very nice and six, uh, dollar or euro and you can add more if you click on the field and then maybe burger description ice price maybe five click on create and the burger gets created and gets automatically added below here and then we can read out our uh, entries by clicking on read. We just need the uh, first right here and we got burger very nice in our console and we can update our entries by uh, clicking on update. So we change our description to super nice and our price to maybe seven click on update and we see it changes to super nice and seven and if we want to delete we again just need the first field and then simply click delete and our entry gets deleted i created a new project and the first thing we need to do is to build out our layout this is our example application we always get when we make a new project. I will delete all of it and we will keep the main and delete the app. Then we use a material app and we say debug show checked mode banner to false to get rid of the debug banner and then we use a theme, use theme data, give it the brightness of brightness dark and use our primary color, colors light blue and use 800 and an accent color. Colors Sion and 600. Then we need a stateful widget. So we type stful and call this my app. And now we will start building out our layout right down here by returning a scaffold. and give it an app bar and the title should be text widget and call it firebase crud next thing we need is our body right below our app bar body and here we use a column and give it some children and first we want to build our three input text fields so we use text field Give it a decoration Let's input a decoration and our our hint text 
should be name and on changed we give it a string name and then we want to call a method called get name and give it the name. We will create this method shortly. First we want to copy our text field and paste it below two times and this our description call it get description also description description and this is our price our price right here and get price and price so now we want to make our methods and we just simply say for now that we want to read out our values here and save them to a global variable. So make a string name and a description and we need a double for our price and then get name gets our name say this name equals name an arrow here Uh, because we are, I'm sorry, we are not in our, not in our state. That's of course not right. So put it right here. So this name equals name, and then we just want for debugging purposes print out this name. And then get a description, get our description, and we want to say this description equals description and print out this description. Last get price. I want to get the price right here and then this price equals um, double pass and give it the price right here and we're passing our string into a double and then we want to print it out print this price. All right, so we will start up our application. Mm, maybe we want some padding. I will add some padding to our column by Alt and Enter at padding and we just Move this and this, and then we start our application. I added my app to our home here in our material app, and then started our application. And this is how far we got. So far, we've got our three text fields, and we just 
make a type in them now and we get our data displayed down here and in the next videos we will create our buttons and then start with Firebase. So now we want to make our buttons, therefore we go in our children's widget here and create a row. And this needs a text direction, text direction LTR, and some children of course, and we give it a raised button. Race button needs a color. Color screen for the first button and then it's child text widget and we say create and then on pressed we want to call a method to call a method um, what is going on? So I don't know why he's doing that. So we want to call a method and call it create um, data. And we will um, I've got one too many that that was a problem. So uh, we want to create data method and we'll create this later. But before that we will copy our button three times for our other buttons and put it right below. And this one is our read button and we don't need a color because it uses our default color default um, blue and we call this method read data. We will also create it later and this is our update button. It needs orange. Call it update and update data. And the last one is our delete. Oops. Need to be red and delete and delete data. So now we want to create our methods up here. First create data and we maybe just print out create for now. Then read data and we'll print out read. Then update data and to print update and then delete data and we want to print print delete. So and maybe we can make this a little bit nicer by adding some padding. Because you know without padding everything looks very squashed. So I added a padding to our row here and we make it um, maybe five. We have to look out a little bit for our sides, for the sides of our um, screen so it doesn't get too big. And we want add a padding to every to every button and this needs to be only right and we need to do it for all the others too. Only right copy this and edit here also paste 
paste it right here and the last one. Right here should make it look a little nicer. So we restart our app and look at it. And yes, this is how we got so far. These are new um, buttons and you can check out if they are working. We've got created, we've got read, update and delete. So, so far everything is working perfectly. Now we want to add SQLite to our project. We need to go into our pubspec YAML and in our dependencies we want to type in SQLite any and save it up and close this file. We don't need it anymore and get our dependencies and then we want to create a new package call this one a model and we create a new file, a new dart file and we call this one dish and this will hold our layout for our data so every time we want to create some data we will make an instance uh, out of this class and this class will give us the um, the looks of our data so we will save our name our description our price and we will um, make this a class and we will always when we make a new dish call this class and make a new object with our name our description our price but we will talk about this in a later video again so we close this one up as I said, this model is for our um, for the looks of our data, if you want. And then we create a new package, call this one a DB helper, and uh, no, rename it, refact, uh, rename database, and to call this one database, and create a new dart file and call this one DB helper. And this file will hold all of our um, methods we need to uh, connect with our database. So we will have to um, create, read, update, and delete. All the methods will go into our uh, DB helper and even more. Um, if we want to create our database and create our table, these will all be in our DB helper. So this one will hold all of our uh, methods to connect to our database. So that's for it. So we've got our model created, which will hold the looks of our data and our DB helper, which will have all of our methods we will need to connect to our database. So now we want to make our data model and we open our dish start and we simply create a class called this dish and here we need two strings we need our name and our description and we also need one double for our price and then all we do is to create a constructor and simply um, say this name, this description, and this price. So we always want to have a name, a description, and a price when we call our class, when we want to make an object out of our class and this, this is what we've done here so far. So again to our class model we simply need this to bundle up our data. So we use it 
um, to store our data when we want to make an entry into our database and this is one easy method how to do it so we simply make um, make an object out of this class and we can then simply uh, save this object with our three entries into our database and that's what we will be doing in the next tutorials now we want to create our database and we are in our db helper dart file for that we first need to import two packages sq flight sq flight dart and we also need our path so we import path path dart all right then we create our class db helper and we want to create a method called init db needs to be asynchronous and here we need to make a string for this data base path needs to be equal await get database path so we um, get our database path right here wait for it and then we save it so this is um, one predefined uh, method where we can save our database to and we need a string called path and we simply say join database path and then the name of our database so in our case we can th call this like dishes uh, db dot db it doesn't really matter just uh, important is the db so it knows it's a database as i said this is like a predefined method which gets us the location where we can save our database so this is uh, predefined and then we simply um, create there our database path so this is then the whole path where we want to have our database so then we make a variable call this db and we call await open database give it our path then we need to give it a version version one and then we want to call on create and on create we want to call um, our on create method we did not uh, create yet and then we want to simply turn our data um, base or to return our db so uh, we want to wait to open our database and save this in our db and here we want to create want to call um, our on create method we will uh, we will define in the next video and then we return our db so in the next tutorial we will create our on create method so and now we want to create our on create method and here we want to create our table so we call what on create needs a database called this db and an int version which we don't really touch so it's also asynchronous and here we await for the following we want our database to execute an sql statement so in our case here we want to create our table so we simply type create 
table, this is our SQL code, call it dishes. And here we want to give it a name, text, description, which is a text, and our price, which is a double. And then we are done so far. Our table gets created right here. And then we return our database. So we can look at it again. So we create our path where we want to store our database. Then we want to create a variable database and we want to, want to call open database and we give it the path of our database and then we want to create a table. And here we want to execute uh, the following commands, the SQL command to create our table by create table dishes, then give it our name, our description and our price. So nothing too fancy, we could give it uh, different other options like um, our primary key um, add an ID, for example, for our dishes, but it's not really needed in our example, so I did not include that, but you can, of course, do that if you want to. So this is really just simple SQL, and you can uh, run every SQL command you know um, and want to right here. And then, if that's executed, we return our database with our table. Next thing we want to do is to check if our database already is existing. And you can imagine like when we start up our application, for example, our database gets created, then the user saves data inside the database and closes the app off. And now if he runs it again, and we create our database again, all the data gets lost. So we want to check if the database already is existing. So if it's existing, we don't want to create a new one. So we don't want to call in it database a second time and don't want to um, return a new DB where we created a new table. So we want to check um, if we already uh, created a database and we need to uh, do it the following way. We create a database variable called the CDB and then we make a future method and needs a database database get DB needs to be asynchronous and we need to get our async package to use our future and if we have done that we can check if db equals null so we want to save our database uh, right here and we check if it's null, so if we never created database, this one here is null, and if that is the case, then we want to say and db equals await init db, which returns as we know our database, and our database then gets saved in our db uh, variable right here. So this here is now saved our database. And if it's not the case, and we first need to return our database right here. And if it's not the case, else we already created a database. So this is not null. And then we simply also return our um, database we created before, which was already saved to our DB variable. 
now we want to create our different methods to uh, create data, read data, update data, and to delete data. And we will start with creating data. I make a comment right here and call it create data. And we need to make a future. And it needs to be an integer. So ret the return needs to be an integer. And we want to create, call it create dish. And it wants to have a dish. Dish dish. And it needs to be asynchronously. So when we call this method, we will give it a dish. So one instance of our class right here with our name, description, and our price. And we will read then the data out of our dish and uh, put it inside our database. And we need to import our dish uh, file right here. So we need to import package Flutter SQL Lite. So Flutter SQL Lite model and then dish start. And our arrow goes away right here. And then we want to create a variable db ready. And we simply want to await until our database is ready. And when that is the case, then we simply return and we call await again. We want our DB ready, make an raw insert. Raw insert, uh, we need to insert uh, data inside our database and we can use an SQL statement right here and we want to insert into our table right here into our dishes and we want to insert our name description description and price and we want to insert the values and now we can use our string interpolation. We want to make it look like this. So if we would hard code it, it would like want to put our values. And for our example, we can use maybe pizza. So our name would be pizza. And then the next value would be very nice. And then the next one would be our price. So we would say maybe six. So this is how it would look uh, hard coded. And we then simply can use our string interpolation to write it out and we can take our values here and then put it like this and just use our dish and name for the first one. The second one would be our dish would be our dish description dish description and the last one would be our dish price like this. So important you don't um, so important you use like your single quotations here. That's important. That's our SQL syntax. It has, it has to be in quotations right here. So and that is all. We simply return and uh, make our raw insert right here when we create our dish. 
Next, we want to create our update data method and we make a comment. Update data and we need again our future. It needs to be an integer again. So I'll return it needs to be an integer and we call, call it update, um, update dish. And it wants a dish again because we want um, yeah, all of our data to be updated. So we want to update um, maybe our description and our price. And then we await until our database is ready and save it again. Await DB. And then we return await or db ready and we make a raw insert again, just like in our create data method. And here our SQL statement comes in again and we need to update our dishes. We want to set our different um, our different entries and we want to set our description and our price. So we want to um, check where the name is. Or we can do that first, I guess. So we could first check where where we want to update and we simply say where name equals and then string interpolation and we want to take the name of our dish where name dish name and uh, so we want to check if we got an entry where the name equals the name of our dish we gave it here and there we want to set new variables for our description set description equals and here in parentheses our string interpolation dish description and then we need to make a comma and set our price equals and single quotes dish price. So when we call our updated dish, we give it a dish with our data. Our data is first our name, so the name of the dish we want to update and we've got our description and our price. So these both fields need to be updated and then we look in our dishes table where name is equals the name of our dish. We just gave it, so the name is the name of the entry we want to update. And here we want to set new data for our description. For our description entry, we want to make it equal like the dish description we have saved in our dish. And the same we want to do for our price. We want to set our price to whatever price we saved to our dish here. And yeah, we return it and that's all for our update method. I tested out our application and I found one problem in our update dish method. Here I need to put our where name, cut it out and place it behind our set. I wrote that this way also in my previous code, but I thought it would be look nicer when we 
uh, had the where first, but that is not intended by SQL. So you get an error there. So just put the where at the end and it works fine. So this is our application now so far with our uh, functionality. And now we want to create um, our pizza garden. Now we want to talk about our delete method. So I make a new comment, delete data, and we again need a future. Type integer and call it delete dish. And here we just to give it a string, string name. Needs to be asynchronous. So when we call it, we give it um, the name of our text field of the dish we want to delete. So we don't need the extra data of description and price because the name is enough to identify the dish we want to delete. And then we make our DB ready. As always, we always need to do that. Wait DB. And then we again return await and db ready make a raw insert and we want to do the following we want to delete from dishes dishes where the name is equal our name right here so that is all for our delete. When we call our delete method, we give it simply our name of the dish we want to delete. Then we open up our database as always, and then we execute the following SQL statement. Delete from our table dishes where you have the name equals the name we just gave you, and then everything gets deleted what's connected with its name, so what's in the same row of the name. Now we want to see how we can read our data from our database. This is a little more complex, but also not too difficult to achieve. So read data in the first path is always the same. So we need a future and call it read dish and it also just needs a string to know which data we want to read. Needs to be asynchronous and then say want db ready await db. And then next we need to do, which is already different, we need to make a variable, we call it read. And here we want to save our um, results. We call await db ready, and now we want to make a raw query. We, so we don't want to insert something like in the other. Um, methods we want to query something out and we want to do the following. We want to select everything from dishes where name equals the name we put here, so my name equals name, and now this uh, simply returns a list of maps. So in our raw query 
when we, when we save this, this is now a list of maps. So we've got a list with different um, maps in it and we want to return the following. Uh, return dish from map. So we want to make a dish object from a map and we need to give it a map and we call read and as I said this is a list of maps when we save this in our variable and want the first entry so we read to get it the first entry. So how do we achieve this That's that we can make a dish from a map? We need to specify it so we need to create this method in our um, dish module. So we go here and we say dish from map so call it like this and it needs a map 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 and here we just say this name equals map name and this Schreibung, uh, this uh, description equals map description and uh, this price equals map price and that's all so uh, let's talk about it again so it gets a little bit uh, clearer so our future doesn't need to be an integer of course it needs to be a dish because we return a dish right here so sorry for that first of all and so we want to read our dish and we give it a name because the name is everything we need to read out our data from our database then we await our database and we make a raw query we want to select everything from our dishes table where uh, from the row where the name fits the name we gave it and we save this in a variable and we call it read and this uh, variable read is simply a list with different map entries so if we had for example um, more than one entry with the same uh, name so maybe we have saved pizza multiple times in our database which is not what we want but it uh, could happen theoretically so this read simply um, would save everything um, line by line and map, make it a map. So every row would be a map and it would be saved in a big list. But for our case we will always have just one entry with the same name and um, yeah therefore we just always need to get the first entry. But if you for example would, um, would have multiple entries with the same name you can uh, or read them out with this by just changing the number right here. So this is the first entry we have in our list of maps and then we want to return a, a dish and we um, made our method dish for map and give it our map right here. And this method works the following it needs a map and we gave it our map right here and then we simply say this name and read out 
or different entries. So this may in this name map name, this description map description, and this price map price, and we make a map out of it, uh, make a dish out of it, and return it right here. Now we want to add our functionality step by step to our main dart, and we first need to import our DB helper and also our model. So we can do that first, then import our package, then database, and then DB helper. Right, and then we go to our create data method and we want to set our state and we make a variable out of our db helper equals db helper. So we make an instance and then we also want to make a variable dish equals dish. So we make an object here and we give it our name, our description and our price. Name, description, description and price. And then we just call db helper, call our create dish method and simply give it our dish. And that creates our data. And we don't really need to set our state, I guess. So I delete it for now. And yeah, so we create an instance of our DB helper, and then we create um, a dish out of our uh, text fields. So our name, our description, and our price gets bundled into a dish object right here. And then we call our uh, create dish method with our DB helper and give it our dish. So it goes right here, create a dish. This is now our dish. We um, gave it here with our name, description and our price. And we wait our database and then we make our raw insert in our table dishes with our name, description, price. And we want to put there our name, description and price, which we saved in our dish object right here. Our update method is pretty easy because it's the same as our create data. So we can simply copy this and put it right in our update data and, and uh, change this to update. And that is basically all. So we create our DB helper again, our dish object right here with our name, description, and price. And then we call our update dish method. So we go right here. We've got now our data here. So we, we wait until our database is ready. And then we call update dishes where name equals the name we gave it and our object here. And then we want to set our description to whatever description we have stored in our object and the price shall be whichever price we have stored in our dish object. Next we want to talk about our delete data method which is even simpler to achieve and we just need to call our to create our db helper equals db helper and then we just call with our db helper 
delete dish and we just give it the name. We have inserted in our text field which then was stored in our string right here. So and then this method delete dish gets called. So we wait for our database and then we just simply say delete from our table dishes where the name is the name we just gave you right here. Now we can talk about our read data method here. We as always need our DB helper and then the next we will create a future. Future from type dish. So we need to import async and we also need to import dish of course model dish and save it and then we call this dish and we call our db helper and we say you need to read our dish and give it our name. So this shall be a dish in the future and we call our db helper which needs to read our dish um, with a name we just typed in our text field. And when this, uh, this has happened, so dish then we um, get our database, get our data back. So I call this dish data. We then print out then print out our variables. So we simply uh, can do it like this. We do our string interpolation, say dish data name. Put this, of course, in our brackets and copy it. Like this and then change this to description and price. So let's talk about it again so it gets a little more clear. So we need future dish and we want to be want this to be a future dish and we want to call our read dish method and to give it our name which we typed in so we give this name to this method right here which which um, of course returns a dish so this is why this is our future dish because our method here returns a dish and we want to save it in um, our variable here. So this has to be a future dish and we give it our name right here and then we make our raw query where we select everything from our table dishes where the name is equal the name we just gave it and as we talked about this read is simply a list with different um, maps on it and out of this uh, list of maps we want to make um, a dish by calling dish from map and give it the first entry because as we talked this is um, a list and we just need the first entry and we want to make this map a dish and then we come here and make 
from our map uh, dish by simply um, putting our name description and price right here. So and if this got executed and we in fact have now our um, object with our data right here in our dish then we can call then because this is a future and um, here our um, data of course gets saved and then we print our dish data name our dish data description and our dish data price out into our console so this is our application so far and we want to test out our functionality now we save our pizza with the description very nice for maybe seven bucks click on create to save it and then we want to read it out can erase this so far and then click on read why 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 Okay, scheiß drauf, machen wir es nicht. Scheißen wir einfach komplett drauf. Lit. Ja, können wir tatsächlich machen. So we managed our basic CRUD functionality, but now we also want to add one more method so we can read out all of our data at once. This can come in pretty handy and it works a little bit different, but also not too complicated. Uh, we are back in our DB Helper class and we make a method called readAll. And this has to be a future of type list and this list wants to have uh, our dishes. So we have our future and the future is of type list and the list holds dishes. And then we want to give it a name, read all dishes, doesn't need anything and we want to make it asynchronous. Then we as always need to make our DB ready variable and wait for our database to get ready. Then we want to make a list of maps and this we call dishes and we await till our db ready and then we make a raw query and we want to select all from our dishes table and then we want to make a list out of dishes and yeah maybe we call this simply a list and this will be our dishes we say 
this needs to be a list. And then we say form int i equals and zero i smaller than list length i plus plus and here we say dishes dot add want to add a dish and call list i and here we want to call the name i will talk about this in a second and we want our description and our price so this description and this price And then we, of course, want to return our dishes at the bottom. So we make our list and here we will get all out of our database and simply put it inside this list right here and then so this is a list made out of maps like in our read up here so a list made up out of our lists for our entries and uh, made up of our maps for our entries then we make a list made out of dishes so we want our dishes to be a list and we want to add some dishes to our list right here and then we make our for loop and we simply watch how many entries we have in our list so how many dishes were in our database and we add one and then we simply add to our dishes list right here um, a new dish and put here our list entry for example, our first entry would be zero. So out of our list for our first row, the name, the description and the price and make a new dish out of it and add it to our dishes list right here. So our dishes list will contain objects. So we're simply converting our list right here, list out of maps to a new list called dishes made up out of our dishes. So this is our uh, list made out, made out of objects. And we had a list made out of maps before. And we simply convert it by going through our list. And for every entry we have in our list, we want to add one to our dishes list and we want to make a new dish depending on the row with the name, the description and the price for the corresponding row in our list. And then we simply return our new list with our dishes objects. And in the next video we will see how to um, use this dishes list in our main dart. Now we want to make our read all dishes method in our main dart file and we need the future and this needs to be a list and this needs to contain out of dishes and we call it get all dishes needs to be asynchronous and we need our db helper of course and 
then we build our future list made out of dishes. Uh, call this dishes. It's DB helper, and here we simply uh, read all dishes, and then we return our dishes right here. So um, yeah, get all dishes. We here make our DB helper, and then we make a future uh, list of our dishes objects, and we read all dishes right here. So we want to execute this method, which returns our dishes, which is, as we have seen, a list made out of objects. And yeah, we make this a future, and then we return our dishes right here. And in the next video, we will use this output right here and uh, display it in our widget tree. I added a row to our application um, below our buttons for our names, uh, directions and prices. It's a simple row, text direction, text direction LTR, and then got three expanded uh, as children and here we just have our name, description and price. So if you want to follow along, this is basically how you can make this row. And then we come to the important part on how to display our data. And we need something called a stream builder for that. Uh, no, not a stream builder, a future builder, because we have uh, futures. And it wants a list. And in our case, our list needs to be out of uh, dishes. Then it needs a future and here we basically give it our data and our data is in our read data method or no, in our get all dishes method. So we simply call our get all dishes method right here to get our dishes and then we use a builder, give it a context and then a snapshot. This snapshot will save our data basically. And then we need to return a list view builder and use uh, shrink shrink wrap true. This basically displays our list below our other items so our, our list get gets displayed right here. Then we need an item count and we say snapshot data and here we get our length. So with snapshot data we can access our data and snapshot data length to get the um, amount of items we have saved. And then our item builder needs a context and an index. This item builder will now build our, our um, items depending um, on the input and we simply return a row here and we can basically copy our row up here. So I will copy this row and basically just put it right here and we need to close this with our, uh, need to close this up right here and then we want to do, we want to get our uh, data around here. So the first one is 
for our name. So we call our snapshot data and here we want to give it our index and then simply read out the name. Same for our description, snapshot data, give it our index and then the description. And we copy this and paste it right here and then use the price. And this gives uh, an error because our price is uh, double at the moment, but we can't uh, put a double inside a text widget, so we have to make this a string by putting a two string at the end. And this is basically our future builder. We can talk about it again. So our future builder needs a list with dishes and he gets his list with dishes, dishes by our method get all dishes. Then our builder needs a context and a snapshot. A snapshot as I said in this variable all our data gets saved and we want to return a list view builder, shrink wrap to place it underneath, item count, snapshot data to access the data, length to see how many items we have, and then our item builder, which will build out every row of items we have. We um, give it a context and an index. This index automatically gets um, higher and higher depending on the data, so the first row get the index 0 and then second row index 1 and we simply uh, read it out. So our first row will have for the name snapshot the data 0, 0 and read out the name. For the description snapshot data 0 description and for the price snapshot the data 0 price. And this will be done for every item we have in our snapshot. And then the next row will get displayed. We now need to set the state for our different methods right here. So we simply set our state and copy and paste this right here. Let's do it for our update data. Put it right here. Um, read data doesn't need it and delete data needs it again. Save it up. And this is our application so far. And when we click on create, we see our pizza get created and we can change it to super nice so super nice click on update and we see super nice gets updated and we can of course read it out and also delete it by deleting it delete it and uh, put it in again so very nice box and read it out. And we should yeah, create it first and then read it. So we've got now pizza very nice and five bucks. Or so our lost connection. Yeah right. So our application works so far. We've got our different um, CRUD elements, so create, read, update and to delete. And we also have seen how to get all of our data and place it in a future builder and simply um, listing out all of our data at once. Hey guys, congratulations. If you're watching this video, you made it through the course. I hope you enjoyed the course so far, learned a lot. And if there are any questions left, feel free to ask me. 
and yeah have a great day bye